Hey folks, we, we get asked quite often about swing weights and how to calculate a swing weight of a baseball or a softball bat. Um, and, and the math is actually rather, it's rather complicated, uh, but, but this, at least the theory of it is, this, uh, this video is not, this, this video is very, uh, this is just meant to be very empirical or you know, very, very straightforward in the sense of if you have a couple of bats and you want to measure their swing weight compared to each other, how, how would you go about doing that? I will leave, and there's several other videos online, uh, professor, uh, professorial type videos that, um, that will teach you, you know, sort of the, the, the physics of it all. But, but this is just going to show you how to do it, how to get a number, and then you can do it with another bat, um, and you can actually compare. Because what, what we know from bats, um, just because a bat has a stated weight, these are both BB core, 32 inch BB core bats. They're both single piece aluminum bats. Um, you have a Louisville Slugger 516 and a Rippet Element 1. Um, but their swing weights are actually remarkably different. And sometimes when you when you just grab them and you try to hold them, um, it's, it's hard to tell. If, if you were to hold these two bats at the same time, you can tell that this one's a little bit, it feels lighter than this bat. Um, and it's not because the ounces are different. The weight of the bat are actually really, really close to each other. But it's where the center of mass is on the bat. So this element, it f the element feels as if it's the weight is here more. It's deeper in the barrel. Whereas the, the Slugger 516 feels like it's more here. Um, and, and you can actually put that to a number. But sometimes... It's, it's actually hard to tell, especially when you get into really lightweighted bats. If you're dealing with like youth bats that are, you know, drop 13s and one's a, one's a 30, 27, the other one's a 29, 16, uh, you know, and one's from Easton and one's from Dean Marini. It's like, well, which one, which one actually is a lighter swing weight? It's actually, it's actually difficult to tell. And, and companies don't, they don't announce this. They don't tell you what it is. Um, you just kind of have to think, well, that's a 17, that's a 16. And a lot of people make the, the, the wrong assumption that the 16 ounce is a, is a lighter swing weight, but it's not true. Swing weight is different than total weight because it's all about how easy it is to rotate the bat around a certain axis along, uh, of, of the barrel or, or of the bat. And by rotate, we mean down here, right? Because we're actually swinging the bat and the bat is rotating around here when we swing it. So how much effort does it take to rotate the bat around the knob or sometimes they talk about six inches from the knob but but in this area that's 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 the question and it's not answered uh by way of you know looking at the stated weight of a bat both these bats are 29 ounces but they swing completely differently so how so how do we do it well to keep it to keep it quite simple um and again just being more practical versus being theoretical this this is the equation and this is the most theoretical we will get but there, there's ultimately four variables we need to come up with, one of which is a constant, so you don't have to worry about it. That's the G. And if, if this doesn't make sense, this little uh, equation, don't, don't even worry about it. Um, the point is, is that you need to find a couple of metrics from these bats. The first one is the easiest one, and, and it is actually the balance point. Now, you can do it very, uh, very involved, and you can get two scales out, and you can put them at different points, and there's an equation, uh, and you and you weigh it and, and on the two scales, and you do a little bit of math, and you figure out the exact middle point of the bat. Uh, I've found that to, to work, and it's great, but most people don't have two kitchen scales, um, nor sort of the patience to do it. Um, so really, the only the real trick is is that you can get a knife edge or your finger, and you can balance the bat. And when the bat is balanced, and you find a place where it's balanced, you then get a tape measure, and you measure from the end of the knob to that balance point. That's it. And so there, there's your number one. So if you take that number, uh, and, and we call that the distance, right, from, from this rotation point that we're going to rotate it on and the middle of the bat, um, the balance point of the bat, then you, uh, you've got it. So you, that's, that's step one. So find the balance point of the bat. Easy enough. Um, step two is, is maybe even easier. Uh, you've got to weigh it. Don't assume that just because this bat says it's 29 ounces that it actually is 29 ounces. A lot of companies don't weigh it with the grip on or wh whatever it might be. And so the bat weight is actually different than what it states it's different. Don't just assume. If you don't have a kitchen scale around, then you are then you just got to maybe guess. Or maybe just use the 29 ounces that it says or whatever it says. But if you have a kitchen scale, use it because you will find that the bat actually doesn't weigh what it says that it weighs. And we have other videos that talk about that. All right, the third piece is a little bit more complicated. Um, 
The third one is we have to figure out what we call the pendulum period of the bat. We have to see how long this bat rotates around small angles. So I, if you're going to do it this way, and you know when you do it professionally, they actually put a grip at six inches and they rotate it, and it's very technical, and they have a laser timer. Look, that works, and that's the better way to do it. But this is, this is sort of do-it-yourself, uh, you know, uh, bat um, uh, moment of inertia calculating. So if you can stabilize your hand somewhere like on a desk, and then as you rotate the bat, what we're trying to measure is one full pendulum period. So that's as the bat goes from there to there. So it goes, so you, you would start here, you would go zero, one, two, three, and I would count all the way up to 10, and I would time it all the way from the time that I said zero up to 10, and I would take that 10, and I'd take my number on my on my uh, my phone or you know whatever it was that I was using my timer for, and I would divide it by 10, and that would equal your pendulum period. But remember, we have to do small angles. You can't rotate it way out here. We don't, we don't want to throw the bat. We, we, do, we, don't, we don't need large angles. We need small angles, meaning that just a little bit. And it will rotate for a long time, and you just count, right? So again, zero. And once you get that number, you now have the pendulum period of the bat. And now, so I said there were four variables that you had to deal with. The time, that's your pendulum period, that T squared. The mass of the bat, uh, then the last one being D, the distance, that, that's your balance point distance. G is the, the acceleration of gravity, so you don't actually know that, that that's a constant. But again, don't worry about that on the site, and this video is for this site, so you can watch it and put it in there. If you're watching it directly on YouTube, then I'll put the link of this calculator in uh, I'll put the link of the calculator in the, uh, um, in the, in the notes, but you come on here, you type down the balance point, that D, right? You type down the total weight, which is M in ounces. Then you type that pendulum period in seconds. Um, some other data just so we can keep track of the actual bat and what it was. And then you hit calculate and it will give you a certain number of numbers and it will give you the MOI because it just uses that calculator it will give you the mass moment of inertia or the swing weight at the balance point um, at six inches from the knob and then of course at, at the actual knob. And there you go. That's a very simple way and a little bit, you know, this isn't very, this isn't ultimately very technical. Um, and if, you know, some physicist is watching this, they're probably, they're probably red in the face at, at that it's not exactly right. But, but for, for a, for a, just a player or a parent trying to figure out the swing weight of a bat and how it compares to maybe last year's bat or, or this year's bat or what bat is actually heavier. This is the only way that I have learned how to do it in a recreatable, somewhat scientific fashion. Uh, and, and that's it. It's just a simple mass moment of inertia calculator on justbatreviews.com. So anyways, good luck. Uh, I do keep track of all the bats that come up here. If you do want a list of these bats, and all the numbers that come up. Remember, these are all user-generated numbers, so I, I don't trust them because a lot of people just get on here and goof around with it, which is fine, and that's that's the point of it. Um, but I do, we you know, so far we have about 1,200 or 1,300 bats that people have input into sort of the database. Um, I don't know how trustworthy they are, but they're, they're maybe they're fun to sort of sort through. If somebody's looking for all that data, you could just send send us an email at uh, admin at justbatreviews.com. So, all right, well, good luck with that, and uh, have fun. Uh, um calculating the mass moment of inertia uh, or swing weight of your baseball and softball bats.